Good morning, a very warm welcome to St. George's Church, the first Sunday in Lent. It's very good to have you with us, sharing in our service of worship here in St. George's. Welcome too to those who are joining us at home on our YouTube and Facebook channels. You're most warmly welcome to this service. Our service is a service of the Holy Eucharist, a service of Holy Communion, using the original Anglican liturgy of the Book of Common Prayer from 1662. So it's a slightly different service this morning. Many of us, of course, are familiar with it. Um, some of us are out of practice, but uh, the words and the rhythm and the melody of these beautiful words and the beautiful liturgy, I'm sure we'll come back to you. One uh, reminder that as of today, as of uh, this last week, we are, re re we are distributing the sacrament again in both kinds, the bread and the wine, and we're also receiving the sacrament once again kneeling at the altar rail. So please come forward as directed by the stewards. You don't have to receive from the cup if you don't want to. The sacrament is complete, receiving it just as the bread, if you'd rather not receive the wine, that's absolutely fine. When the cup comes, just uh, either get up or uh, make, a, make a little sign. The children will go to their special activities. Just before the first reading, I'll announce the point at that stage of the service. And so as we prepare to meet with God this morning for our hour of worship, may I ask you to prepare your hearts by keeping a minute or two of quiet together.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Love, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. We sing together the Kyrie from the liturgical setting. God, whose Son Jesus Christ did fast forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as thou knowest our weakness, so may we know thy power to save through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and I'd like to invite the children to come to the front. The children who are in church this morning to come up to the front. You can bring a parent with you if you would if you want to. Come and sit with me up here on the step. Yeah, you can bring Samuel too if you'd like to. So I want to talk for a minute about numbers, numbers, and the first number, the, the most important number for you is how old are you? How old are you? Eight. How old are you? Twelve. Eleven. Eleven. How old are you? Five. Five. Eight. Eight. How old's Abby? Two. <laughs> Eleven. And Sam was not quite one. No. Amos is almost eight months, sorry. Eight months. Amos is almost eight months. Numbers are really important, especially how old you are. But in the Bible, too, numbers are important. For example, the number seven. Number, now, seven's a really important number. Does anyone know why seven's an important number? Yeah. Because it's how many days of the week, that's right. Seven is the number of days in the week, and Genesis 1 says God made the world in seven days. So seven is a whole number. Number 12 is important in the Bible. Why should number 12 be important? Jesus had 12 disciples, which is exactly right. There were also 12 tribes of Israel. And how many months are in the year? 12, yeah, 12 is also a really important number. 12 and 7 in the Bible are really important numbers. They're whole, we call them whole numbers. But there are other numbers that are important too. There's another number we're going to talk about today, and it's 40. 
Now, why do you think 40 might be an important number? Anyone know? Yes. Not sure, not sure, not sure. Yeah. I think you should be sitting where I'm sitting. <laughs> you should swap places. Well done, that's exactly right. Jesus, after Jesus was baptized, he went into the wilderness for 40 days and he didn't eat and he was hungry. And in these 40 days that we have before Easter, we remember Jesus being in the wilderness. And when you, when you, when you don't eat, when you're, or when you give something up, when you fast, when you make, do something, you, you make space in your life. And this is what we want to do. We may want to make space in our life for God. Because if you're all filled up, then you've got no space for God in your life. And so some people say, well, I'm not going to eat sweets in, in Lent. And some people, some of the grown-ups say, I'm not going to watch television in Lent. So maybe some of the children don't watch television in Lent. Some people say they want to pray more and make some space in their life. The idea in Lent is to make space for God. And so you have, if you're all full up, you, there's, no way, there's no space for God. So we're going to make space for God in Lent. And that's what we're going to do for 40 days. Yeah? So you guys go to Children's Church, and we are seated as Murphy reads our first reading. Well done. I need to make a little space for Murphy here. <laughs> reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for good, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they, are, and they, knew they were naked, and they sewed fig trees together and made lion clothes for themselves. This is the word of the, word, of the Lord. Thanks. stand and sing together the hymn number 230.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Firm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light. Very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In the name of our loving, liberating and life-giving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A Scottish theologian from the Middle Ages, the Franciscan Duns Scotus, pondered 
and meditated why Adam had also eaten of the fruit and had not rejected it. Duns Scotus comes to the moving, I find it sweet and cute, moving conclusion. Adam saw perfectly clearly that his wife had been deceived by the crafty snake. She will have to die, he thought, and God will offer to create a new companion for me. But I do not want a new companion. I want this one and only this one. There is but a single way in which I can remain with her and that is by conjoining my fate to hers. We will live and when the time comes we will rot together. Isn't that cute? Dear friends, an extremely handsome naked young man and a perfect beautiful naked young woman, tame wildlife, an eloquently talking snake, an enchanted gorgeous garden, fantastic trees whose fruit, when eaten, gives wisdom or eternal life. Wow, what a plot! This story from Genesis, the first book of the Bible, seemingly, seemingly as fairy tale like as it is, charming and naive, has fascinated and captured the imagination of children and adults alike for ages. And the intriguing story goes on. The first two humans, after eating the fruit, realize that they are completely nude and that they have done something forbidden. Therefore they hide from each other behind the leaves and bushes and from God who lives together with them. And when God searches for them and inquires about them, the lad, after all, blames the young lady and she blames the serpent and they all blame God because, well, he is to be blamed for everything, isn't he? No one takes responsibility. Responsibility and guilt is passed on. Better to be a victim than a perpetrator. So there is no apology, no insight into one's own mistake. And God throws them out of the delightful garden and they should have, that they should have tended as gardeners, puts them in an inhospitable desert that is the exact opposite of the Garden of Eden. Bare nature, out of control, hostile, deadly, the law of the strongest rules, devour and be devoured, survival of the fittest, rough, wild, parched, full of thorns and brambles and stones and constant danger to life. God places even an angry angel at the gate, at the gates of the garden for safety so that the two exiles do not also eat from the tree of immortality. Genesis 1 to 11 has occupied scientific, philosophical and theological thinkers for centuries and has generated a great deal of debate and theological controversy up to the present day. Dear friends, these seemingly simple and imaginative stories answer or at least raise the most essential and profound questions of humanity. Where do we come from? Where does the evil in the world originate from? Although God created everything good. Why do we suffer and die? What is guilt and sin? Why does it spread unstoppably? 
And how can we be freed from it? How do we find our way back to our native land? And the people of Israel told themselves these stories in order to better understand why they, as a people, starting with Abraham and continuing through Moses and the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness and later the deportations into exile had to endure for centuries hostile nature and political environment whose emperor God like claimed that all who would not resist his imperialist expansionist lordship but would submit to the emperor and the Roman Empire would be blessed with the superior military, economic and cultural achievements of the Romans and with order, prosperity and peace. In later centuries it, it was the, sen the colonial powers that not infrequently subjugated and exploited other countries and destroyed ancient cultures and oppressed women in the name of religion and the church. And we still see today in the attempts of Islamist regimes to suppress, suppress women and men and children and spread terror and fear and not least in the war against Ukraine where an aggressor claims to be liberating people with the blessing of religious leaders from the hands of fascists and satanists and western pedophiles and homosexuals. Jesus resists the supposedly reasonable and beneficial proposal of the crafty and eloquent tempter. He does not doubt God's unconditional love for him and all humankind. And he knows that no one can be permanently forced into loyalty by fake news, manipulation, threats and the use of violence. He knows the limits of the power of evil. And on the cross, he will even endure evil, torturing his soul and body, bear it and vanquish it for us, out of pure love. Jesus is the new Adam, as the Apostle Paul calls Christ. He knows us. He stays with us. He shares our human condition. He loves us to the end and he dies for us and with us but his love does not leave us rotten in death and so he will create us and give us new life in him and with another Dear friends, during these 40 days of Lent, Jesus wants to be especially close to us in the reading of the Holy Scriptures and in the sacraments, so that we can reflect on and follow God's trace in the story of the people of Israel and of Jesus and his disciples from the beginning of creation through the experience of shame, guilt and failure, of pain and despair and darkness, of mourning to hope and rejoicing. And perhaps we will also realize how God is with us in our lives, in the lives of our family and friends, our world. How God is present, remains present, and encourages us, comforts us, guides us, and gives us confidence and joy and how he loves us unconditionally despite all our failures and all our guilt. Amen.
Jesus said, let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth, where the rust and moth doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rust nor moth doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. St. Paul wrote, All things come of thee, and of thine own do we give thee. We stand and take our red hymn books as we sing together our offertory hymn number 123. <laughs> Let us kneel to pray. Praying for the church and the world and thanking God for his mercy and goodness. Praying for the people of Ukraine and for an end to this war. Praying for the people of Turkey and Syria, those who lost their lives, their family, their livelihoods and their homes. Praying for the people of Nigeria after the election yesterday. Praying for people in all sorts and conditions in their life. Almighty and ever-living God, 
who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to continually inspire the universal church with a spirit of love, truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, that under them we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant to all them that are put in authority that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace. And especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. <clears throat> Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, this is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right to say to you. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. And now we give thee thanks, because thou, didst, thou dost give us the spirit of discipline, that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace, as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O most merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. of God for the people of God. Draw near with faith.
Let us pray. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Would you stand for the final blessing? The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment or two. <coughs> very warm welcome once again to St George's. It's very good to have you with us sharing in our service of worship for the first Sunday in Lent. There are five more Sundays, six more Sundays in Lent, uh, so uh, do in this Lenten season try and remember the Sunday services to keep them and as we make this space for God in our lives then pray for God's blessing and God's leading and guiding. As a church this Lent, we're having a project to build our next well. And Daniel, would you come forward? Daniel is from Malawi, and Daniel has uh, organized through his contacts in Malawi for us to build a well in a village that has no access to clean water. And in a primary school in the village of Tunga. Tunga, the village of Tunga, uh, Daniel has arranged that we're going to build this well. The church council at the end of last year agreed to set aside 2,000 euros for the building of the well in Malawi, but it's going to be a little bit more. There's high inflation in the country, and at the moment the uh, well is going to cost us 2,680 euros. So it's 680 euros we need to raise uh, and we want to build the well before, uh, after the rainy season, which means March or April. Daniel is going to be standing at the door with the basket. The stewards will give you a basket at the door. And we're going to ask today and in the Sundays in Lent that you might give a donation to build this well. Is there anything you want to say, Daniel? Just a, a word? Uh, 
In the microphone? Yeah. Uh, not, not exactly. Uh, I just, I'm just appreciating that uh, by just, you know, uh, here in Germany, I see more people are busy. Just by you being at church like this, it's encouraging and, and may the Lord bless you all. Thank you, Daniel, very much indeed. The other notices are on the service paper if you want to sign up to join the visit uh, in March. Uh, the information is on the notice paper. If you want to join a Lent group, it's not too late. Uh, all the information is on the back of the service paper. Tia, where is the first Lent group on your, the icons in Lent? Seat here if you want to join. This is the extra length group number four. Icons at the table. Bring and share at Tia's house near Hauptbahnhof and uh, talk to Tia to after the service if you would like to join that or indeed if you want to join any other group. Friday is the Ecumenical World Day of Prayer. We're joining uh, our friends in the Evangelisch Friedensgemeinde, Tannenberg Alley, that's the other side of Heerstrasse. On uh, Friday, it's, uh, begin the programme begins at six and there's a service at seven o'clock. So to our final hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights, number 56.